Yet on September 2, 1945, after years of raging battles, countless deaths, and the disruption of hundreds of cities, the Emperor of Japan surrendered to Allied forces, bringing World War II to an end. Despite the surrender, many Japanese soldiers stationed on the Pacific Islands continued to fight until news of the surrender reached them. One particular soldier, located in the Philippines, did not surrender until 1974, 29 long years later. Hiro Onoda was born March 19, 1922 in the Wakayama Prefecture, Japan. When he was 17 years old, he went to work for the Tajima Yoko Trading Company in Wuhan, China. At age 20, he was enlisted in the Imperial Japanese Army. He trained as an intelligence officer in the commando class Futamata of Nakano School. There he was trained in propaganda, sabotage, martial arts, and guerrilla warfare. On December 26, 1944, Onoda was sent to Lubang Island in the Philippines. His mission? To sabotage the enemy in any way possible. This included destroying the Lubang Airport and the pier at the harbor. His commanding officer, Major y Yoshimi Teniguchi, told him that under no circumstance was he to surrender or take his own life. As he was departing to begin his mission, Taniguchi told him, It may take three years, it may take five, but whatever happens will come back for you. Hiro was sent to the island alone, but once he landed, he met with a group of Japanese soldiers who had been sent there before. Unfortunately for the Japanese, the officers outranked him and prevented him from completing his mission. As a result, when the Americans landed on February 28th, it was much easier to take control of the island. As the Allies moved inland, the group split up and retreated into the jungle. Onoda's group consisted of three other men, Corporal Shoichi Shimada, Private Kinshichi Kazuka, and Private Yuichi Akutsu. Hiro spent 29 years on the Lubang Island. He got most of his necessities by hand. Onoda survived by eating boiled bananas, coconuts. His group would occasionally steal rice from the local villagers. They killed about three cows a year. One cow would serve about 350 pieces of beef strips that they dried for later use. They had made traps in order to capture small game, like rats. His island had lots of fresh water, but Onada boiled the water, thinking it was contaminated. Onada's clothes were always rotting, so he sewed them together out of a plant found in the forest. Shelter was an important element of his survival. He usually slept outside, but during the wet seasons, his shelter was a wooden structure called a bahi. The men built these close to pastures where cows roam, but on the opposite hill from villages, so they wouldn't be able to see their smoke. O Onada's health was very important to him, so he intensely cared for it. He brushed his teeth with fibers from palm trees. The U.S. government tried several times to notify Onada and his crew that the war had ended. They were, however, unsuccessful. On October 1945, Hiro and his men found a leaflet left behind by islanders. It read, The war ended on August 15. Come down from the mountains. The men did not trust the leaflet. They thought it was a ploy from the Allies and deemed it a hoax. Near the end of 1945, leaflets were dropped from planes with a surrender ordered by General Tomoyuki Yamashita. By this time, they had been hiding for about a year. This was the only evidence they had that the war was over. They studied the leaflet and deemed it a trick once again. In 1952, the government dropped photos by the men's family members, urging them to come home again. Once again, they concluded this was a trap and ignored the government. In September 1949, Yuichi Kutsu, one of the soldiers, left the group. In 1950, after six months of living in the jungle on his own, Akutsu surrendered to Filipino forces. As a result, the other men became even more secure. In June 1953, Shimada was shot in the leg during a shootout with local fishermen. Onoda nursed him back to health, only for Shimada to die on May 7, 1954 during a shootout with the search party. Kazuku was killed by local police on October 19, 1972, 27 years since the war started. Onoda was now officially alone. Onoda and his men believed they were at war. As a result, they occasionally killed civilians who they thought were enemy soldiers disguised as policemen or farmers. Overall, they killed at least 30 people and injured over 100. On February 20th, 1974, Onoda met a Japanese college dropout named Norio Suzuki. Norio was on a search for Hiro Onoda, a panda, and the abominable snowman in that order. Suzuki found Onoda after four days of searching. If he had not been wearing socks, Onoda would write later, I might have shot him, but he had on those thick woolen socks, even though he was wearing sandals. The islanders would never do anything so incongruous. In an interview with Anoda described the moment, 
the sippy boy Suzuki came to the island to listen to the feelings of a Japanese soldier. Suzuki asked me why I would not come out. The two quickly became friends, but even with Suzuki's pleading, Onoda still refused to leave without orders from his superior officer. Major Yoshimi Taniguchi had meanwhile quit the army and become a bookseller. Suzuki returned to Japan with photographs of Onoda and himself as proof of their encounter. Taniguchi flew to Lubang on March 9, 1974. He met with Onoda, who was in his full uniform, and fulfilled his promise that whatever happens, we'll come back for you. Onoda was given the order that the Special Squadron of Staff's headquarters is relieved of all military duties. After receiving the news, Onoda thought, we really lost the war. How could they have been so sloppy? Suddenly, everything went black. A storm raged inside me. I felt like a fool for having been so tense and cautious on the way here. Worse than that, what had I been doing for all those years? Gradually, the storm subsided, and for the first time, I really understood. My 30 years as a guerrilla fighter for the Japanese army were abruptly finished. This was the end. Then the disbelieving Onoda wept. He surrendered his hand grenades and rifle. Onoda killed many people, but because he had believed the war was still going on, he received a pardon from his crimes by the Philippine president, Ferdinand Marco. The following is a map of Onoda's movement on the island, found in his memoir, My 30-Year War, No Surrender. After 29 years of surviving in the jungle, surrounded by intense heat and insects, after spending years creating methods to find food and cope with hunger, after killing those that he thought were enemies, avoiding almost all contact with others, Hiro Onoda was finally home. Onoda was a national hero when he returned to Japan. He was met by his aging parents and huge flag-waving crowds filled with patriotism. For several days, Onoda was the main topic of national news. To many, he was a ghost from the past. He spoke of duty and traditional values, which many Japanese people had thought had been lost over the years. When asked what his mind had been on all those years in the jungle, he replied, nothing but accomplishing my duty, and I was fortunate that I could devote myself to my duty in my young and vigorous years. Upon his return, Onoda was examined by doctors and was found to be in exceptionally good health. He was given a military pension and signed a $160,000 contract for his memoir, No Surrender, My 30-Year War. Hiro tried to live a normal life in what he saw as a drastically different Japan. Onoda disapproved of the withering of traditional Japanese values and culture. There are so many tall buildings and automobiles in Tokyo, he said. Television might be convenient, but it has no influence on my life here. He felt like a stranger in a strange land. In 1975, Hiro moved to Brazil to raise cattle. He married Machi Onuku, a tea ceremony teacher. Later in 1984, he moved back to Japan and founded the Onodo Nature School, a survival school youth camp. In 1996, he revisited Lubang Island and donated $10,000 to a school. Hiro Onoda died on January 16, 2014, at the age of 91 from heart failure. Onoda explored the ideas of survival, patriotism, and persistence. Surviving in the jungle for years with such little as supplies and no real shelter is not an easy thing to do. In a sense, he literally explored the jungle and island, as well as metaphorically explored new limits of survival in nature. Onoda also explored what it really means to serve your country, and to put your duty before selfish pursuits. In this way, he allowed the new generation to see what it's like to be a true soldier. He was an inspiration to them. Lastly, Onoda explored what it is to be tirelessly determined and focused. For 29 years, his thoughts consisted purely of accomplishing his duty, and he was steadfast in this pursuit.